very colorful uh, <laughs> exhibition. It's uh, on your face. So I think when you come in, it's like, no? Yeah. Even though it's in your face, it's also peaceful at the same time. Like even though it's it's very outspoken in terms of how it how it the impression it gives you at first, I think it's also very introspective. Each each work really gets you into into a state of mind that it's yeah, kind of also very much looking inside. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think it's full of contrast that we really like. All the works uh, uses a really strong. It's really visual art, so they use really strong, beautiful uh, um, aesthetics, uh, strong colors. Um, so to draw people in to thinking about things. So it's, it sort of seduces uh, the audience into looking uh, at, at, you know, it becomes very playful, humorous, uh, beautiful, colorful, uh, to draw people into the, to the content of the work. Um, I think that's a general uh, approach of, of all the artists that we've invited to to take yeah, take part of the show. Um, it's kind of it's joyful and anguishing at the same time. Humor is a very key part of the of the exhibition, but humor not as a straightforward uh, idea, but also uh, something that you can that it's like a strategy to cope with difficult situations, but at the same time it kind of opens up complexities. So it's now, if you think uh, an exhibition that has to do with humor, it's supposed to be funny. And I think parts is very funny, but it's also, I think, very serious. And it comes often from, from very personal uh, or political or yeah, difficult topics that then humor is used as a, as a tool um, to, um, to deal with these things. So crying to laughing has to do with the mechanism, has to do with the process of going through something and then using I think humor as, as a tool to you know get out of that difficulty uh, of crying into laughing um, so I think it has to do with yeah that momentum or that process uh, mm -hmm. so going from something difficult to something or like how humor can be used as a reliever or uh, yeah a tool to uh, deal with uh, with difficulties The center, which is the cinema, uh, with Pauline uh, Cornier-Gardin and Jenna Malton's work, both has to do with the body very much. <clears throat> um, so that's the center. Uh, around the body, you have uh, the the drawings from Marnix van Rooms. That sort of becomes the face of the body. And then, of course, we also hid uh, wine and and juice inside of the walls, um, which potentially could you could think of blood. Uh, coming through these uh, things pouring out on the outside. Um, so yeah, that becomes sort of the center body um, as a bit the thinking uh, that you can walk around in circles. Pauline Cornier Jardin, in her film, she, she draws inspiration from a, uh, a movie called Un Chant d'Amour, uh, which is a like homoerotic uh, narrative happening in a prison. And she changes the character into uh, female figures that are in her menopause. But she's, she's actually, uh, she's focusing on their erotic and power uh, at that phase in life. So I think it's very beautiful how she, yeah, transforms the narrative. Yeah, there's a liberation in, in not being that uh, reproductive position. It feels like instead of being an object of desire in society, they actually become uh, a very active form of, the, of desire, very empowered and uh, in the film even uh, dangerous, to, not to, a, to an extent. So I think that's a very nice... Uh, change of role, yeah. If you take Shanna Moulton, for example, I think that's a good example of, of how something very personal deals with uh, commerce and, and um, advertisements that tries to profit from, 
from your uh, ill-being um, and, and a very critical look at that as well. So Gita Scali often reappropriates or, or like uses, ad, in, in this case, advertisement or, or things that she finds in the news that, that she kind of then makes her own to, to tell a critical story that, that uh, it's kind of underlying in the, in the material she's using, but she then uh, yeah. reappropriates, reappropriates that narrative. So in this case, it's an advertisement of a, of a shawarma chain. She uses that metaphor, this, this gastronomic metaphor, to talk about patriarchal uh, influences and how uh, even to relate it to female career, this, this kind of constructed desires and, and uh, uh, to, to kind of look at that critically. So Afra Aisma has this beautiful ceramic plates, uh, which is because she experienced that she blushes very much if, if it becomes uncomfortable. So these plates is, is a way to, to deal with that uh, or confront that personally. And that's hanged next to a, a, a beautiful dress that she made for herself also to put on, to feel empowered. Uh, so she wrote down a lot of thoughts uh, on this dress and then is able to wear this to, to empower herself. Carmen Roca Igual in her work I mean, in, in her work in general, she, she, there is issues of identity and also trying to, you know, there's like a, an introspect search, but also through social, like media that, that uh, becomes very much an intermediate in this relationship with the world, between ourselves and the world. So her work happened during the, the quarantine in Spain with, with her family. Yeah, it's you know, like spirituality, the, um, but, yeah. but then in, in a quite a superficial uh, manner. So it has, it has in some way to do also with superficiality, media critical thinking okay. of what it means uh, to be especially alone then, but then also having this you know, phone that is mm -hmm. the, the, the connection to the world and still need a a need to communicate, a need to reflect, uh, but then through social media. We have the three pillars, which is uh, humor, fictioning, uh, and complicating. Those are the three sort of basic cores that we, I think, are interested in, in artistic practices. As we spoke about humor, for us, it's a way to <clears throat> To, to keep an open attitude, to enter the work. Complicating is, is a way to, like we never think things are straightforward. There's always like nuances. There's, it's, it's better to remain with questions and, and like uh, a sense of complexity that there's many layers than, than something that is simplified. Or um, fictioning, yeah. no? Like to, to really, it's a way to sometimes Fictioning can be a bit disorienting as well because you don't have this normative way of looking at things. It's, so it's, it's ways of imagining things differently. But I think in that there's so much power also, no? To, yeah. Yeah. To propose things. Yeah. yeah.